What's going on YouTube? It's Maddie with Fuse Arrow Fitness. And this is going to be the birth of a new series. It's going to be titled Amped. And this is episode one. The analogy Amped stands for achieving mental and physical toughness. It's something I came up with not too long ago that I thought would suit this series well. In case you missed the video called Do I Even Lift? I'll link that on the screen for you. It pretty much goes over, you know, the lower back injury that I had, kind of getting back into training, why I'm lifting such a light weight. And it's really just a process of a comeback that I guess you could say I'm making from a little bit of a layoff from the gym. So I'll be doing workout commentaries, vlogging throughout the day, showing you my meals, all the same stuff that you might see in individual videos, but I'll combine footage from a couple of days and create an episode. Nothing's going to change on the channel. You'll still get your recipe videos, your workout tips, the informative videos on nutrition and supplementation, all that's going to stay the same. We're just going to include a series with some more everyday life and vlogging in there. I'm definitely looking forward to it. So make sure you are subscribed to the channel so you get the updates on when these new episodes come out and leave me any feedback you'd like. I have my information in the description box below to Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all of that. So feel free to shoot me a message and tell me what you would like to see in future episodes. And with that said, let's get started on episode one. All right, so about to head off to the gym with Brittany, putting together a little pre-workout right now. Depending on how I feel in the morning, depending on what I ate and how much energy I have, will usually dictate what I put in my pre-workout. I do have ingredients in bulk, so I like to make it myself. Uh, here is just water, and this is a strawberry watermelon flavored meal. So this is just to give the pre-workout flavor. Today, all we're going with is caffeine. Normally, you'll see caffeine sold in pill form. I like it in a powder form because I like to control how much I use and mix it into my pre-workout. So just 200 milligrams of that today. Uh, we have citrulline malate here. I'm going to go for about 6 grams of citrulline malate and then uh, 3.2 grams of beta alanine. So this right here is a pretty effective pre-workout and it's rare that you'll get that dose of ingredients in your pre-made blends and matrixes and shit like that. So if you want to go ahead and do the bulk ingredients, you might save a few dollars, it's really not that much, and it does become a pain in the ass to have to make it, but again, you control how much of each ingredient you want to put in. So that's all I'm gonna to do today, and we're gonna hit the gym. Yeah! All right, I know I'm not the Hodge twins, but I love doing that. Anyway, got some commentary for you from today's session. Started out with some lat pull down work. Notice how I retract right here in the beginning, boom. Retract that scapula, bring those shoulder blades back, and then start pulling. And I personally try not to go too wide on this, mainly because that starts to limit your range of motion. And I also don't completely extend at the top of the movement because I don't want to lose that retraction in the shoulder blades. So we started out the workout with some of those lap pull downs. And from there, we went out to some dumbbell rows. There's Brittany just doing hers. And then I went ahead and did mine in a supinated fashion. So holding it as if I was to curl the weight, again, trying to keep the shoulder blades retracted and really pull through the elbow. So the bicep shouldn't be pulling this weight. You should really think about just driving that arm backwards and bringing the weight towards your waistline. <laughs> this set of curls absolutely destroyed my arms. And it's only 15 pounds per dumbbell, but we're using something called the super pump method. And the focus here is to do low rest times low reps but high sets so we're doing 15 sets of five with 15 seconds rest in between and this allows for more weight to be used than in a typical local muscular endurance set and i'm not saying it works magic i'm not saying it's going to put 10 inches on your arms but that's what you do with training you tear it up t-e-a-r so trial error adjust and repeat you have to continuously analyze yourself analyze your training and your program see what's working and what's not working and then just make any necessary adjustments. So after that, I moved on to some blood flow restriction curls. Now disclaimer, don't jump into the gym and start doing this because it looks cool or you wanna try it. It's not something that should be done without proper guidance or direction on how to do it. My coaches have me doing this. Uh, I did some research myself on it as well. It allows me to lift a lighter weight and get a similar training response to lifting heavier weight but without the stress on my muscles. So. The hypothesis behind the research is that it builds up metabolites of fatigue at a really low intensity. 
I believe I was only lifting like 30 pounds on this machine, but it feels a lot heavier than that once the pump starts to kick in. Now, once again, please don't go into the gym and just start trying this because you want to get that feeling or you think it might look cool. It's not something I would recommend everybody do. And that pretty much wrapped up the training footage that I have. After this, I went on to do some uh, tricep kickbacks and also some rope press downs, blood flow restriction as well. But I wasn't able to get that on film, so... That's pretty much the end of the workout. Hopefully you guys enjoy these commentaries and voiceovers. I do prefer actually talking to you in the gym, but the music is extremely loud and that just wouldn't work out. One of the most indecisive people ever here. Anyone else like that where you just, you're hungry, but you have no idea what you want, what's actually going to fill you or satisfy you. I was gonna do some oatmeal. I was gonna do some eggs. I decided on actually very random, doing some cream of wheat. So it's similar to oatmeal. It's like a hot cereal, a little bit finer. Uh, we're just gonna do a packet of this, which the macros are, again, similar to oatmeal. You know, one fat, 30 carbs, seven protein. Do a scoop of this vanilla cellucor whey and a little bit of pumpkin pie spice which has some cinnamon, nutmeg, and stuff. So it'll pretty much be like a pumpkin spice oatmeal with vanilla protein powder. I don't know. And I'll probably end up eating something afterwards because this won't fill me, but it's like pre-gaming before I have my meal. So we'll see how it comes out. So this is what cream of wheat looks like for those of you who have never seen it. It's like ground up oats. All right, so we're all done sitting down to eat some breakfast. The instant cream of wheat, like I showed you earlier, just that one packet. We used a half serving, so one half cup of unsweetened vanilla almond milk. I threw a packet of Splenda in to sweeten it up a little bit. The pumpkin pie spice and one scoop of the vanilla cellucor whey protein. You could see it definitely got a really thick texture and it came out really good. So you know, just a little bit something different from oatmeal. That's usually my go-to. It's quick, convenient. You know, I like to throw the protein in it to give it more flavor, sometimes peanut butter, but figured we'd change it up today, and this came out really good, so I'm going to eat it. Ready to lift? Friday. Friday night, 7.30 p.m., not hitting the bars, just hitting the gym tonight. Uh, going to go kill it. What do we got today? Got the workout sheet right here. We're going to be doing some rows and some arms for the majority of it maybe some abs at the end and that's about it boom so we're kicking off the workout with some t-bar rows and this was a super set so we did 10 regular t-bar rows and then without rest went into 10 dead stop t-bar rows so the theory behind this is just that i'll be fatigued from the first 10 reps and it will require more speed and I'll definitely have to work a lot harder, hopefully recruiting more high threshold motor units in order to move this weight. So it's just a theory. There's no real proven research or fact on this, but it makes sense if you think about it logically, being that you already fatigued the muscle and now you have to push through, but from a dead stop, it's definitely going to require a lot more work than using the momentum. Again, right now, just treating the body as an experiment. You know, it might deviate from the norm a little bit, but to me, that makes training interesting. So. Here's Brittany hitting a set of lap pull downs. I just want to say I'm incredibly proud of her. Uh, her work ethic is unbelievable. She's enrolled in school in an accelerated master's program in legal studies and special certifications. She goes to school full time. She works. She balances her social life. Her and I are planning a wedding. She supports what I do 100%. She helps me film in the gym. She's a big part of this YouTube channel and a huge support system for me, which really means a lot to me. And it just goes to show you that with all that she does with school and work and helping me out and taking care of her own stuff, she's still able to hit the gym. So time management is a huge thing and she busts her ass when she's in the gym. So, you know, a lot of people make excuses of they have busy lives and this and that, but you know, it, it's priorities and time management. And on top of all that, she puts up with my shit. So I give her a lot of props. <laughs> All right, so next thing we have up is a giant set, and this finished off the workout. This consists of four exercises back-to-back -back with no rest. It was a French press for the triceps, a V-bar behind the head curl, 
a rope press down and a rope hammer curl, and the guy about to walk behind me is an absolute monster. That guy was huge, unbelievably strong, and a cool guy as well. But anyway, we're doing this for the triceps. Uh, great tricep exercise, get a really good stretch, works the long head really well, and moved right into a V-bar behind the head curl. Now, this may seem like one of those things, like why is this kid doing that in the gym? But the truth is, for a curl like this, it doesn't only involve elbow flexion, which is what we're familiar with, as well as supination or the palms facing upward. But along with that, the biceps function is also shoulder flexion. So you get to incorporate all of those three into this one movement. And the reason for the V-bar is simply it just feels more comfortable. So this is not to say this replaces dumbbell curls, barbell curls, easy bar curls, anything like that. It's just another movement that we're throwing into the program for now. And it's subject to change, but again, I enjoy doing it. This pretty much finished off the workout, the giant set. Again, that was four sets of 12 with the French press, the cable curl, the rope press down, and the rope hammer curl. Now, I'm not saying this is scientifically backed. I'm not saying there's research showing that this will get you bigger muscles. It's something that my coach and I are experimenting with. It adds a new dimension to training. I enjoy doing it. And that's what training is about, making sure you're making progress, but also enjoying what you're doing. That concludes episode one of the Amped series. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, please like the video by clicking the thumbs up button. That really helps the channel out a lot and I appreciate it greatly. So thank you guys very much for that. Uh, I'm open to any feedback you have. You can leave it in the comment section below of stuff you'd like to see in future episodes. And that's pretty much it. So I look forward to making a lot more. I look forward to your feedback. And until next time, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks again, everyone.